guys anyone see the 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 tenth uh, and when when the translation happened in english here i like i feel lost like i don't know how to read this uh, uh i don't see where is number 10th the privilege where his if his eyes fall into his uh, into a woman her husband must divorce her anyone saw it Let us see. I'm trying to search for it. Let me go back to the Arabic to be sure that it is here. Give me a second. All right, because sometimes some website, you know, they delete some. Uh, Muslims are famous with those uh, things. Let us go to Al Ahzab 50. Give me a second. Uh, that is the verse about Wahhabat Nafsah al Rasul. Any woman she gave herself to the Prophet. Let us see if we can find it here. Give me a second. I see it already in the other website, but I want to be sure I can find it here. So I can post it for you. See, for some reason, I mean, it's the same book. This page here, they took it off. This page here, look. Just to show you. Maybe it's just the order of the pages. I'm not sure because I saw it before. See, here it says, if his eyes, number 10, if his eyes fell into a woman, her husband must divorce her. Let me use Google Translation. Give me a second. Translate. Come on, translate. Here we go. We go to the end of the page. It should be at the end. Look at the privilege. If his eyes fall into a woman. You see here, they are counting the privilege of Muhammad. And our friend here who called me, he agreed Muhammad have a privilege. Okay. All of them about sex mostly. Six, number six, marriage uh, without guardian. So he do not, women do not need permission like Zainab or anyone. She want to sleep with Muhammad? No need for permission. A Muslim, he need, she, a Muslim woman, she need permission. But in the case of Muhammad, who cares if the father or the family be like, accept no, Muhammad, that's it. Privilege. Seven. Privilege number seven. Pri privilege number five. Look, all of them about sex. Number four. It's about sex. Everything is about sex. <laughs> number seven. Marriage without dowry, for free, for free, totally. Privilege, privilege, brother. All right. Uh, number eight, marrying why they are in a haram. Okay, the guy is, you know, he's busy, he's supposed to be worshiping God, but now he can have, he can have women. He have a privilege, privilege, it's about sex. And uh, number 10, look at this one. If he sees a woman, her husband must divorce her. And it is permissible for him to F her. Do you see it? Do you see the prophet of God? I mean, come on, he's a prophet of God. Do you want a prophet of God not to have a privilege of effing women? No way. He's a decent man. And because he is a prophet, he have to F anyone he like her. That is what prophet of God do. I mean, come on. Enough is enough. Are you saying to me that men like you are equal to penis of Muhammad? He's a prophet of God. And if his eyes, and this is what is about Zainab, by the way. 
his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. Is that my statement? He is above Islamic law. He made a law for those fool, but he's above all law. And this is how you know a scumbag. A true prophet of God is the first one to obey God's command. He don't make a privilege. He, he don't make a special religion for him. Because what this is mean, Muhammad have a special religion for him. There's a religion for the Muslims and there's a religion for Muhammad. We do not know what the name of it. The religion of Muhammad have totally different rules. Have nothing to do with the rules of Muslims. He can go to the house of a man is married. He flirt with the wife. He can look at the women. The husband must divorce her. He can marry a woman without the worry. He can get a woman without permission from family. He can have sex when he's doing around the Kaaba. He can, he can, he can, he can, he can, he can. And not only that, he have the fifth of the booty, money. The fifth of the booty. <laughs> that is very important, my friend. Right? The fifth of the booty. So he got the women, he got the money, and now he is a king. What a life. He married a woman, she is 20 years older than him for the sake of her money. And now she's gone, finally. Alhamdulillah. And now he want to have a lost his desire for children to have sex with babies. He go after Aisha. And then after all of this, this guy, he says to me, I don't see a clear cut. You don't? I do. Guys, what if a priest, he says to you, God sent me to you. And God told me that if I like your wife, you have to give her to me. What you will do, what you will do to this scumbag priest? You will kick his ass. <laughs> you will carry him. You open your garbage container. <laughs> you put him inside. <laughs> This is a new case. In my case, I will, I will, he will not leave the house. You know. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, and uh, you know, a Christian prince. Yeah, he have a human. You know, he's have a lust for her. Oh, okay, he's a human. Mm. Right, right. You know, yeah. This is what prophet of God about. You are human. And we have sexual privilege. And the God, he encouraged us to go after women. They are married. Mm. That's godly. And you know, like what make it all more funny, like I show him that this verse is wrong vacation. He says to me, so what the problem? Oh, you Muslims keep saying, you did not change anything in your book. And now we find that every single verse is in the... Because, guys, if you change one verse and you put it in the beginning, you change all the verses because all the others change. But we have actually proof that not only one verse, hundreds of verses are displaced. And that's why the Quran looks so stupid, so funny. One verse is speaking about the rain, the other verse is talking about David. The other verse talking about Muhammad. The other verse talking about the wife of Muhammad. Now, I was going to delete this video, but uh, I hope he will record it before I delete it. Uh, so he can record his conversation. You know what? This is remind me of the video we saw from the KGB guy. Do you remember what he said? That those communists... They practice brainwash. And what brainwash does, that it doesn't matter how much you show them the truth. Even if you shower them with facts, still they will not get it. Even if you show them 
let us see hold on history where is the video let me play this video for you this is a very important video actually and this is what muslims suffer from too not only those liberals because brainwash is just a tactique it's not about just a, a specific religion or specific people this is an officer from the KGB from the time of Soviet Union talking about how the Soviet Union planned to destroy America and they succeed. They destroy generations. How? Listen carefully. And this is fit perfectly with this guy who he just called me. He kept denying things. Doesn't matter what you show him. The logical subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, active мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions mm -hmm. in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages uh, the first one being demoralization it takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation why that many years because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy exposed to the ideology of the enemy in other words Marxism Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's over fulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As mm -hmm. I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before <laughs> that. That's the tragic of the situation. Of the then he will understand. So this guy who he called me, if when Muhammad he take his wife and he hit his balls, then he will understand. Otherwise, you are wasting your time brainwashed even if you shower him with facts and proofs still he is in denial and those they are suffering from this for the last 40 the, the soviet union took them 30 years 25 years those muslims under this for 1400 years who dare to question the ethic of muhammad you see in their mindset the second you you question him they make you feel guilty if you think about it just in privately in your head and now if you dare to make the question come outside of your head, your head is gone. So what the Muslim they do in order for safety, don't question. The kid he asked, don't. This is prophet of Allah. You don't see that. It is a terrorist religion. Everybody terrify everybody. And even the terrorist himself. He better be scared because if he say one word out of the line, it, the terrorist himself would be dead. He's no different. You say one word out of the line, you are dead. This is how garbage this religion is. The one asking for tafsir, well, this is Al Tabari, Al Qurtubi, sorry. And this is the link. I can give it to you. Here we go. They remember the link is in, in Arabic. I'm using Google Translation. And when the Muslim they claim that Muhammad in the Bible, well, the whole Bible is against people like Muhammad. Same time, Muhammad don't worship the same God we worship, because the God of the Jews 
is a spirit and he has a spirit. The God of the Christians is a spirit and he has a spirit. The God of Muhammad, he is not a spirit and he has no spirit. So it's a very stupid argument to say what they say because in order to have the same God, at least we have to have the same concept of God. <laughs> if we have the same God, we should have the same heaven. Do we have virgins and their legs is up all day long in our Bible? Are we going to have boys serving us? Have you ever heard of a heaven? I mean, one God, many heavens? Each one have different story? <laughs> in fact, because Islam is a stupid religion and Muslims are bankrupt, they keep looking for their prophet in our book. Why our book if it's corrupt? How we can find Muhammad there? So we corrupt the whole book, but we forgot to leave Muhammad there? Can we take a verse two more? <laughs> in the Bible, in the Bible, why? The Bible speak about Muhammad, yes, speak about false prophet, false teachers, they come to you in a close of a sheep, but they are wolf. But you are trying to find your prophet in my book? Your prophet is a black stone kisser, pagan. His God, his name is Allah, is the moon God. The God of Musa, he gave him to a commandment. Your religion broke every commandment. Uh, people here, they are just the same to my stomach. Hmm. We talk about God, we talk about Muhammad, we talk, we lose our voice, and people listening to my stomach. We have a stomach doctor there, he's listening. Like what his stomach is saying. What? Ah, demanding food. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me tell him. Hey, Christian Prince, I heard your stomach. And I base in my Morse study, because I used to be in the KGB, I believe your stomach is saying which means I want food. Thank you. Obviously, you are focusing with us on the topic. You are multitask. You listen to me, listen to my stomach. I did not fart yet, but I hope it's going to come soon. And you can translate that too. Amazing. How you can do that? It's impossible. You, you must be a prophet of Allah. You have all those skills and you are hiding them? How many privileges you have? Be honest with me. Be, besides, you know the language of the stomach. Are you going to make a book? It's called The Interpretation of Christian Prince Stomach. Like verse number one. <laughs> I mean, people are really funny. Sometimes they make me upset with those comments, but sometimes I don't know what to do. I mean, I give up. We talk about God and people, they focus on, oh, Lord have mercy. No, I do not need food. I need to go to sleep. It's already the morning. My voice is gone. And we said, I'm going to talk to this guy for 15 minutes. <laughs> but you know I I do my best trying to help this person and anyone we don't hate Muslims but we feel sad for them I mean it's so clear that this person is a scumbag he go to his own son wife he have sexual privilege money privilege Jesus who is our Lord is it true that he forced himself, not only he did, he forced himself, which means he forced himself on the disciples to wash their feet? Is that true? Why Jesus, who we believe is God, why he don't have a privilege Name for me a privilege, Jesus. Look what he said to me, just have a miracle. This, this is not a privilege. This is, what? Are you comparing? Privilege is something private for you. You do it for your benefit. When Jesus, he healed people, he is healing people, not himself. Do you see how their understanding missed, missed up? How we can compare Muhammad making privilege about sex 
to say that Jesus have a privilege. What a privilege? Uh, he, so the privilege of, of Jesus, he can do miracles. Muhammad privilege, he can F people. Very weird people. So while Jesus was busy healing this and that and thousands of people making the blind see, the one who cannot walk, walk, Muhammad was going to the house of his own son to sleep with her, and this is a privilege. And this is what is ethic. Anyway, thank you for listening to me and for the gentleman who was listening to my stomach. I really appreciate it. Uh, my stomach saying to you, thank you. We need always interpreter for stomach language. And I think we are lucky to have you. And if you can be here every day and listen to my stomach and you can write down all the evidence, the, the, like, all the incident and the conversation of my stomach so my stomach can enter history. Like you say, uh, December 9, 3.44 a.m., Stomach of a Christian Prince says Falafel. Page number one. Page number two. The stomach says, I want a uh, hamburger. Uh, number, page number three. The stomach says, I need to fart. That would be beautiful. You will be the first man who entered those books, what is called the, the document of Genesis, uh, what is called? They will put you in the museum, you know, like your book. Actually, there's a guy, a Muslim guy, he took a PhD uh, in farting. I'm not joking. The name of his PhD, he just remind me, the knowledge of the, uh, of the sound of the stomach. Now, it's not really about stomach, it's about farting. I'm, I'm serious. Let me see if I can find the, the PhD. Hold on. <laughs> uh, I need to remember the name of the... <laughs> Muslims. You see, I was joking with you, but now I remember there is a... There is a Muslim guy, he made a PhD study. This is telling you how silly and how stupid their universities are. Hmm, I guess I got the name wrong. That's what... Yeah, I, I don't remember the name. Uh, but you know, there is a there is a there is a brother. His name is Rashid. I don't know if you know him. Uh, actually, I learned about it from his video. He made a video about a Muslim guy. I don't know if you guys have his channel. You can find it maybe. He made the video about it uh, about a guy. <laughs> you know, I think it's in Egypt, in Azhar University making a, uh, a PhD on the and the sounds of the of the fart and the, and the stomach PhD according to Islam so he analyzed according to Sharia law which which fart is the one who break based on the sound and the smell the whole PhD is about farting you know I'm not joking by the way this is serious anyone knows uh, uh, Rashid You will find you will find he made a video about it, but this was many years ago in Arabic. Yeah, you Muslims, you destroy everybody. By the way, your Daniel he debate everybody, but don't dare to come to me. Strange, isn't it? Look like he can destroy everybody except me. He avoid me. Yeah. If you go right now in the books of Hadith, and you type the word fort. You will be surprised. I mean, you will find endless numbers of fault in hadith. Well, it's a fault in religion. Look, look. Fault, fault, fault. Fault. And look, the funny is, the Muslims, they don't even translate the word fault. Look, they are 
حدث حدث وات حدث احدث او oh بوي uh, الله will not accept your prayer if you fart brother because your prayer can go with farting let us type something different hold on <coughs> Prophet Muhammad is so specialized with farting. Oh, we type in English. Hold on. How the Prophet he knew all this information about farting? Isn't it really obvious that he is a prophet of God? Seriously, if Muhammad is not a prophet, how he becomes so knowledgeable about farting? Nobody can explain that. This is not normal. Christians, they can try to ignore that he's a prophet, who deny it, but fart, prove that he's a prophet. How he knew this? When shaitan, he hear the adhan, he start farting, and he run. And yet those Christians, they say to you, that Muhammad don't have, a, like, miracles. Is it a miracle to hear a fart nobody can hear? Nobody can hear it. Prophet Muhammad only can hear it. And there is a connection between global warming and Islam. Because shaitan, he fought. And there's many, billions of shaitan, by the way. According to Muhammad, every Muslim have a shaitan. He called him Qareen, which means the clone. Each time... The shaitan, he heard the Muslim saying, Allahu Akbar, he fought because he didn't want to hear it. Showing respect to Allah, which is very normal. But here you notice, by the way, that this is connected like to spaceship knowledge. First time I saw the spaceship going, like when I was a kid, uh, like, you see this rocket and there's a big fart coming from back. Right away I hit my head. I said, oh boy, how prophet of Allah he knew that fart can send you to heaven, to, to sky. Shaitan, in order to escape the prayer, to increase his speed, he do what the rocket does. He bent over, he squeezed himself, he squeeze it, he squeeze it, he squeeze it, like the engine of the rocket. Boom! And then, shaitan, he go far away. How prophet of Allah, he knew this. Many people, they are, like those Christians, I don't know what's wrong with them. Isn't it obvious? Especially, that shaitan fart, as you see, is invisible. Like, if it's visible, by the way, anybody can see it. But what make it miraculous that the prophet he can hear it and see it only again it's a privilege you know yeah look how many fart 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 look at this The Messenger of Allah, one of you does not cease to be in Salat as long he is waiting for it. And the angel do not cease praying for one of you as long he remain in the Masjid, which means the mosque. Allah forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy upon him as long he does not Commit fart. Sorry, I did clap my finger, my hands against the microphone. I hope I did not hear you hurt your ears. What the heck? Do you see how fart destroyed everything? Look, the angels are staying with you in the mosque. You are praying to Allah. The angels are with you. They will be with you, brother and sisters, as long you don't fart. 
And the far, the, look, the, maybe you will not see the word far there. You see, where is far? Here we go. This is the word far. And I think they do it in purpose. They don't translate, so people will not laugh. This is the fart. <laughs> when you read it, like how and what is this? Why, why they are? Why translated the whole thing except the word fart? Any Muslim can tell me. Why you Muslim translate everything from Arabic to English except this word? Is it too big? Is that because it's have a frequent? <laughs> like the frequent of the fart cannot be translated? So they translate everything except the word fart. So now the one who is, this, you know, he is not an Arab, he don't know what Arabic is saying. He will say, did not commit hadith. What is that? Or maybe this is fornication. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> and look 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 a guy from Hadramut which means from Yemen he says to him and what is Hadath huh? he said breaking wind <laughs> which means Muhammad using words about farting look 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 he have a new name for it The guy, he said, okay, commit hadith. What the heck is that? What does that mean? He said to him, uh, okay, listen, mean the breaking winds. Uh -huh. Which means even those Arab, they don't even hear this word. What is this? This, this madman, he fabricate words. And now we know why he did not translate. Because the, the in, in purpose to say, that the other guy, he said, what is hadith? What does that mean? And the answer now is 14. And look, they say break winds. Look how polite. Break winds, eh? You must then break a lot of winds. Yeah, I mean, this is really, the angels will stay with you as long as you don't fart, you know? Even if you are fornicating. The prophet, when he went to his own son, wife, and he have lost for her, the angels was with him. He did not fart. You see, as long as you don't fart, you're fine. Mm. Oh, there's even hadith about silent fart. Oh, really? So the angels will leave because of uh, fart sting? Mm. But I don't know. I what I know your prophet is think. Isn't it the hadith your it says that your prophet he takes shower with dead dogs? And women blood from period and garbage and he stink? This your prophet, look at this. So if you fall, the angels will not accompany you, but yet your prophet sleep in uh, taking a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period? Isn't it obvious that your prophet is mentally ill? Why in the world anyone? Wanna do that? 